Which NFL quarterbacks would I let date my daughter? You guys may remember I did the same video about a year ago, but safe to say things have changed. Now, Zach Wilson, he's like unproblematic. He seems like a nice dude. Russell Wilson, also 100% yes. He's with Sierra. Sierra seems very happy. He just seems like such a nice guy. Maybe Wilsons are just weirdos. Anyway, let's run it back. Just like last time, we're gonna go through every starting quarterback. And for quarterback situations where the starter isn't 100% clear yet, we'll go through each candidate for the starting job. Josh Allen recently left his girlfriend for Haley Steinfeld. So few thoughts on that. One, nice. But two, I can't have the same thing happening to my daughter. I mean, he's just gonna be constantly looking for an upgrade. And as soon as some hot actress comes along, he's just gonna leave her. I mean, I get it, but come on, probably not. Tua Tonga Vailoa. I want my daughter to have a guy with a good head on his shoulders. And with Tua's concussion, history, I'm not sure how much longer his head's actually gonna be on his shoulders. Probably not. Mac Jones. Mac threw a few tantrums last year, but they were justified. Plus, he only seems to have beef with bearded guys affiliated with the Patriots, so we should be fine. Wait. I'm giving him a yes anyway. Aaron Rodgers, absolutely not. If I let my daughter date this guy, she's gonna end up tripping balls in the Andes Mountains trying to find Bigfoot. That weirdo can find some other girl to drink boba and get matching astrology tattoos with. Zach Wilson, gotta do an honorable mention for Zach. Obviously, he's not actually competing for the starting job, but after I spoke relatively highly of him last time, I need to address this. Absolutely not. Keep your MILF hunting, scowl face, Nepo baby energy away from me and my family. Joe Burrow, one of the only elite quarterbacks who doesn't run that much, which is good because that means he needs to be committed and decisive as a pocket passer. And we want a man who doesn't have commitment issues. Plus he's handsome, so that doesn't hurt. Lamar Jackson got franchise tagged and had to hold out to get a long-term extension. Now I'm fine with that in theory, but the way he went about it with all the cryptic social media posts, not great. He did what he had to do, but if this dude dates my daughter, they're gonna have one argument. He's gonna be on Instagram saying shit like, I'm not a running back and I'm not running back to you either. No one has time for that. We're going probably not. Kenny Pickett. Based on the last time I did this video, I probably give too much leeway to the young guys because we just don't know that much about them yet, but Kenny seems like a nice young man. I mean, it's a little weird that he has such tiny hands and wears gloves all the time, but we can get over that. I'll say yes. No. Trevor Lawrence. I still don't love that there's like an 80% chance he would have longer hair than my daughter. Plus he made that huge comeback against the Chargers and I'm not sure I'm comfortable with someone so familiar with coming on backs. Whatever, I'll say yes. Ryan Tannehill. I want my daughter to have someone with a stable job and he definitely doesn't have that anymore so I'm going probably not. And then we have Will Levis, the guy who's threatening Tannehill's job, but I'm gonna say absolutely not. This psychopath eats bananas with the peel on and puts mayo in his coffee. And before any of you come at me saying he was just joking when he did that, one, he still did it. And two, I don't want my daughter dating someone who does dumb shit just because someone dared him to. Anthony Richardson. So we've had some mobile quarterbacks come up already, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, but those guys are pretty accurate passers. And before any of you say Lamar can't throw, educate yourself. Now Richardson has a strong arm, but his accuracy isn't great, so he leans on his legs a bit more. And I don't know about you guys, but when it comes to dating, I don't want someone who runs as soon as things get tough. Probably not. CJ Stroud's probably a good dude, but based on how bad the Texans are gonna be, he's probably gonna be sad and irritated basically all season, and no one wants to deal with that. Plus, his first name is Coleridge. Eh, I'll say okay, but have her home by eight. Patrick Mahomes. Look, if my daughter's dating Patrick, that means he got rid of Brittany, which in the grand scheme of things is great, but I said this last time, if my daughter is Mahomes' type, that must mean she's similar to Brittany in some ways, and even if that's true, that's a reality I refuse to face. So, probably not. And don't give me the he's rich defense. Every quarterback's rich. It's just a matter of how rich. You're just splitting hairs at this point. Justin Herbert. Love this guy. Love his energy. If you've seen my most likable NFL players video, you already know that, so he gets a yes from me. Jimmy Garoppolo. Last year I said no because he likes to date, let's call them adult entertainment actresses, and that's just not a good look. Combine that with the fact that he lives in Las Vegas now, and I can only assume that problem's gonna get worse. Stay away from my daughter, Jimmy. You and your sharp jawline. If I need to cut a block of cheese, I'll let you know. Russell Wilson. Oh boy. I don't think my opinion has changed more on one player than it has on Russell Wilson since the last time I did this video. To be fair, he does still seem like a good dude. I mean, he hasn't done anything objectively wrong. He's just a cringe lord, and no one wants that. Absolutely not. Before we get into the NFC, I wanna let you guys know that this video is brought to you by Manscaped, the perfect company to keep all these dudes appropriately groomed before they date anyone, let alone my own daughter. Manscaped is trusted by more than 8 million men worldwide for their trimmers, liquid formulations, and premium boxers, and their performance package 4.0 is a game changer. It includes the Lawnmower 4.0, a fourth generation electric trimmer with a ceramic blade designed to reduce grooming accidents. Basically, it helps you take care of your balls, something Dak Prescott wasn't very good at last year. It's also waterproof, so you can even trim in the shower, and it features a smart cordless charging system, and these little LED lights on the front to show you how much juice you have. Then we've got the Weed Whacker 2.0 nose and ear hair trimmer. I'd like to sit here and tell you guys I have no use for this, but yeah. You'll also get the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant for all day odor protection and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray with cooling aloe vera to refresh your downstairs whenever you need it. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts with their Performance Package 4.0, including these anti-chafing boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. So go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free international shipping when you use promo code BENCHWARMER at checkout. All right, back to the video. Jalen Hurts, not a lot to say. Good guy, great player, definitely gets a yes. Dak Prescott definitely took a step back statistically and maybe overall performance-wise last season, but still a great dude, mental health advocate. I can't not give him a yes. Daniel Jones. 
No. Still don't like the guy, and he falls into the Anthony Richardson category of running when things get tough, but he looks doofy while doing it. Also, as a Patriots fan, I'm just always gonna have a grudge against the Giants. You guys are just gonna have to deal with that. Sam Howell. For those of you that don't know, Sam Howell is part Korean, and we love diversity because that means when you eat together as a family, you're opening the door for all kinds of different food. Unless you're Sam Howell, because apparently he's never eaten beef or seafood. He only eats chicken. Kind of weird. I'm gonna say probably not. Jacoby Brissett's kind of becoming a modern day Ryan Fitzpatrick. I mean, he's bounced from team to team more than anyone on this list. Dude is such a journeyman, I think he actually hitchhiked his way to Washington. Between the implication of him being passed around more than anyone else and the general inconvenience of having to move every time he switches teams, I'm gonna say probably not. Kirk Cousins. Kirk is so corny, but I find it really hard to believe that he wouldn't treat my daughter incredibly well. Not a guy I'll look forward to hanging out with during the holidays, but that's not the end all be all. I'll, I'll say yes, but have her home by eight. Jordan Love. If there's one thing I know about this man, it's that he's patient. The guy sat behind Aaron Rodgers for three seasons before finally getting a shot this year. And knowing my genetics and what kind of personality my daughter is likely to have, she's gonna need to be with someone patient. Yes. Jared Goff. Remember how Sam Howell doesn't eat beef or seafood? Well, it turns out Jared Goff can't eat red meat because of an enzyme deficiency. Basically, he can't break down the protein, so if he tried to put on muscle by eating red meat, he'd just end up looking like this. It's one thing if you don't eat red meat by choice, it's another if you simply can't. So I'll overlook this and say yes. Plus, he kind of looks like Ryan Gosling. Justin Fields is vegan. I mean, seriously, what are the odds? Fields is also another guy that might fall into the Anthony Richardson and Daniel Jones category of running when things get tough, but I have a little more faith in Fields' development, so I'm willing to overlook that. I think he'll take a step forward as a passer this season, so I'll say yes. I still like Baker Mayfield, and maybe it's my blind faith in him, but I I'm gonna give him an okay but have her home by eight. He's competitive, he's fun, he just happens to not be that good at football sometimes. And that's okay. Kyle Trask, the other guy competing for the starting job in Tampa. That's really all I've got to say about him. I don't know shit about this dude other than he went to Florida. Got no reason to say no, so I'll say yes, but have her home by eight. Bryce Young, yes, absolutely. Seems like a great dude, and he's 5'10", which as we all know is the ideal male height. Definitely not saying that because that's my height, no sir. Derek Carr looks like he wears more eyeliner than almost any woman I've ever met, and that makes me uncomfortable, so I'm saying probably not. Desmond Ritter, this guy looks like a World War II veteran if you look at him from the wrong angle. Probably not. Brock Purdy, this man went from being Mr. Irrelevant to the 49ers starting quarterback in no time flat. Now that's ambition, and that's confidence. That's exactly the kind of guy you want in your family. Plus, I can yell his name like Brock Lesnar in WWE. Brock Purdy! Trey Lance. Look, you don't want to date somebody whose entire life and entire identity is football, right? You want someone who can take a step back and smell the roses. Well, I think Trey is pretty good at that since he's only started five football games since 2019. So I'm going to say yes. Geno Smith. I like Geno, but remember his iconic quote, they wrote me off, I ain't right back though. So you don't write back, huh? My daughter sends you a nice letter and you're just going to throw it away? She texts you and you're just going to leave her on red? Uh-uh. You get a no. Matthew Stafford. Just a good dude. He took time off from football to tend to his wife when she was sick. He's donated money to the University of Georgia for social justice initiatives. He even donated money to Detroit for an education center after he left for LA. Easy yes. Kyler Murray. No. Look, there's nothing wrong with playing video games, but this man's an addict. If he dates my daughter and their anniversary falls on a double XP weekend, you know that date is not happening. Hard no from me. There you have it. Every quarterback I would and would not let date my daughter. Let me know if you agree with my choices or if I was a little unfair to any of these guys. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.